And I, you've heard about Katie. Those of you who weren't here, Katie's 24. Um, she's got three siblings, two twins, I think, and one uh, female, uh, two sisters who are younger and a younger brother. She has a history of self-harm. She's made two major suicide attempts, although not, as far as I understand it, not one recently. Um, and um, those are m mainly in the context of relationships where she has problems with men and um, uh, she becomes rather dependent, as far as I can tell, on men and um, uh, is rather reliant on them for her function. And particularly when they're not there, she has problems, I think, uh, uh, is uh, the sort of areas. And, and Katie and I are uh, taking it that she's been in treatment now for about four to six months. So we know each other. Uh, we do have some sort of alliance. It's not an initial meeting, okay? Uh, this is, th th we have a, an ongoing relationship here. So we're going to try to, um, I'll be trying to use that to some extent. But my main purpose will be to get her mentalizing about herself and others. It could be others out there or it could be in the session itself when she's not mentalizing. If she is mentalizing, I have to make a judgment about that. For example, if somebody says, as you saw in the mask, if somebody says, well, her hair doesn't look that nice anyway, this is a non-mentalizing statement because it's just a descriptor. It says nothing about a mental process, okay? And it doesn't answer the question, which is how is she feeling, okay? So if she said something like that, you'd have to assume that's a non-mentalized statement, and therefore you've got to do something about getting the dialogue up to a mentalizing level, which is the main aim. So, hi Katie, how have you been doing? I'm okay, how are you? You're okay, good. That's good. Yeah. I've had a hard week. Okay, go on, tell me in what way. I mean, it's just really hard to get a job right now, and yeah, of course. it's something that's really important to me. I just can't seem to, story of my life, no one wants me. Well, the economy sucks, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I mean other people can get jobs, though. Well, how have you been going about that? I mean, because with the economy as it is, it's gonna be really hard, isn't it? I mean, I've been applying to multiple jobs online a day. I've been going out door to door, sending in applications, and haven't heard back from anyone. So you've been really, really working hard on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to talk about that, or is there anything else? I mean, how, how, have, you, how have the uh, symptoms gone and things like that that you've been filling in? Has there been anything in that this week? Because I haven't looked at it, I'm afraid. I cut myself after I came, didn't hear back from the interview the other day. Oh, right. Okay. But that's not that big of a deal. And it was also because Tom didn't call me back. So why isn't that such a big deal? You've been working really hard. It's not, I mean, tell, tell me if I'm wrong here. You've been working really, really hard and trying to get jobs. I mean, that's one of your things. Mm -hmm. And you didn't hear back from anyone. Okay. And then you cut yourself? Yeah. In what way is, isn't that a big deal? The whole thing sounds a big deal to me. I mean, I know it's a big deal. Yeah. But. What made you say it wasn't then? I didn't want him to get upset with me. What made you say, think I would be upset particularly about their self-harm, do you mean, or anything else? Yeah. How I know we've worked really hard on me not doing that. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I'm really mad at myself. Hmm? Are you mad at me? I'm not mad at you. Oh. Well, Tom's mad at me because he won't pick up my calls. <laughs> oh, so it's all going wrong. What? Is it all going wrong? Is yeah, that what you're my saying? my whole life's going wrong. Yeah, okay. So where are we going to start with this? Where would you like to start with this? Well, you're the doctor. Why don't you tell me where we should start? Well, actually, I was thinking about starting about how hard you've been working because that sounded really, really important. How have you managed that? It's just really painful to keep trying really hard mm. and to keep trying to be emotionally stable in my relationship and it's not working. So I, I just want to freak out at him so that he answers and I just want to get really upset and stop applying for jobs, but I know I can't do that. Okay, so we, we, you're kind of muddling, you know, are we, are we talking here about you and Tom? Are we talking about are you working hard in that or working hard in getting both. jobs or both? Both. Okay, okay. I mean, I guess I care more about Tom, but my parents care more about the job, so. Mm. What which do you which do you care more about? Tom. I got there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which do you more? Tom. Tom. Okay, okay. 
just tell me what's been going on, how you feel about Tom at the moment, how? I mean, I love him, but I love him more than he loves me. And it's really sucks. He never answers my calls, he never answers my texts. Yeah, what makes you say that you love him more than he loves you? How do you work that out? I do things for him that he won't do for me. Mm. I would I always answer his calls. Mm. I call him 16, 17, 18 times in a row, no answer. It's ridiculous. If he called me that time, many times, yeah, but what's I would going answer uh, every let's time. Let's ask you, what's, what's going on here for you? What, what makes you call him so often? Because he doesn't answer, so I have to keep calling. Yeah, sure. He, do you know how painful that is? To not no, I don't. Me? Tell me how painful it is. Tell me what it does that he doesn't answer you. It makes me feel like I have nothing to live for. I've put everything into this relationship, and it's not enough. Yeah. So his not answering should lead you to jump to the whole sense you feel like you're not worth life's not worth living. It's a big jump, huh? It is when you say it like that. Mm. It looks like it. So for you, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you say to me back? How have things been with Tom when you've been seeing him for you? It's good when we're together, and then the minute we have to separate, I'm really anxious because I know that when we separate, he's just not going to answer me. I can only count on him when we're together. The minute we're not together, it's like he's not in my life anymore. That's how I feel. Right. What's happened to him? And I told him that, and he told me it's ridiculous. You don't think it is? No. That's no, how I feel. Absolutely. Okay, so you really, really <laughs> feel like that. So when he's not there, when he's not answering, that's a big, big problem. Okay. Can I just divert that slightly? Because then, what's it been like then over the week in between sessions all the time? Because we've had problems about that before. I mean, how's that going at the moment? Because you haven't been contacting me. You know, you've been okay. Yeah. So um, it's getting harder because Tom's not answering me. So of course I want to contact you more now, but I know that that may be inappropriate. Yeah. Well, you've but you've worked quite hard on that. I was just thinking about things you've worked hard on. You worked hard on not contacting me all the time, mm -hmm. and that's been going quite well. So you're suggesting I do that with Tom? Well, I was just wondering, actually, to some degree, what you're trying to manage is what you're talking about, which is this whole sense that you feel like life's not worth living as soon as he doesn't reply. And it's how you manage all that. I can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. When he's there, it's fine. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Unless he's being a dick, and then that sucks. It's well, pretty yeah, often. When people are being dicks, it always sucks, though. Are you ever a dick? <laughs> yep. Are you? I can be a bitch, yes, I can. Really? Only when he's being rude, though. So it's him. It's always him. I mean. You know me about always. Always is one it. of those big non mentalizing words, isn't it? He starts it. Always? Most of the time. Most of the time. 99% of the time, he starts it. Okay. Okay. What about your 1%? Is that trouble? Right. Yes. Tell me in what way it's been trouble. Has it been trouble this week at all? I mean, I imagine that getting that many phone calls in a row is annoying. But if it's annoying, then answer. And then you won't have 17 phone calls in a row. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that's a good solution, actually, but he's not, is he? I do it. He says, I'm in the shower. I, I, was, in, I was playing. I was out with a friend. When I go to the shower, I text him and say, I'm getting in the shower. I'll be out in 10 minutes. I'll text you when I'm out. I'm, I'm, my phone's dying. I'll plug it in right when I get back. Don't worry. Why can't he do that for me? This is another example of things I do for him that he does not right. do for me. I mean, I can kind of I get like hold of I feel like you think this. this is ridiculous right now. No, I just think. I feel like you think. No, like no, Tom. it's actually not what I was thinking. I was actually thinking how desperate you become because he's not responding. 
of what you make of it. That's what I was thinking about it. Because you, you, in the end, you make something terrible about it because you want to harm yourself or kill yourself. Well, I think that this is why we've been working hard for me to get a life so that I don't have to live his life. And that's why it's so important that I get a job and stuff because he has other things to do. He has a good job. He has friends. Mm. I don't have a job. I don't have friends. So, of course, I'm going to want to hang out with him all the time. Yeah, I wasn't so sure. Is, is this about hanging out with him or is this about something about your experience of whether he loves you or not? I think that it's that. You think it's that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like I have to be with him all the time because I don't know if he loves me. And how does being with him, is it work for you? Because he wouldn't want to hang out if he didn't love me. So when we're together, a, I know he loves me. could be being a dick. But if he's being a dick, then he doesn't love me. Right. So you feel he doesn't when he's being a dick? I'm just when we're together, I do. Yeah. Because I'm like, you're putting up with me. I'm putting up with you. But when we're not together, I'm like, he doesn't call me. I always am the one to call him. I'm always the one to initiate everything. Yeah. Maybe I just could go a week without calling him and see if he talks. And see if? If he calls me. Yeah. I don't know if I can do it, but it's a good idea in theory. Is it? I'm not sure what it's for. To test him. Yeah. And if he fails it? Then I know he doesn't love me. Yeah. What do you reckon is going on with Tom at the moment with you? I think he thinks I'm crazy. Really? And what do you feel about that, then? I mean, I know I'm crazy. Are you? What? Are you? Yeah. Well, go on. Tell me in what way you have a sense that you're crazy. I have to say, because it doesn't look that... I don't understand why I have to be there. I don't understand why I have to... Yeah. Why I have to keep calling him, or why I have to be with him. Or why I can't get a job. Mm. I mean, it's difficult to know, isn't it? Why you have to be with him. I mean, we all want to be with someone we love and so on, but your whole sense is that when you're not with him, and tell me if I'm getting this right, because I'm just trying to clarify so we know where we're at. You have this whole sense that when you're not with him, that maybe he doesn't love you. Is that right? So he has to be there. It's like, if he loves me, why wouldn't he want to spend all his time with me? Yeah. And the answer to that question is what? Because he has a life? Because he doesn't love me? I don't know. Mm, yeah, so you just don't know. Okay. Can I just try and grasp one thing. I mean, we've been talking just about this for 10 minutes or something, but mm -hmm. does it go anywhere for you? I'm just not sure where we're going with this, because it may go round and round a bit, you know. Your sense of if he's with you, he loves you. If he's not there, then you still feel he doesn't, and then you can get desperate. It goes with me in the sense that right now, if I wanted to call him, I'd be able to tell myself that I don't need to, and that he still loves me, I can think clearly about it. Mm -hmm. But at other times, when I'm not here, when he doesn't answer my first text, I think he's doing something really bad, and he doesn't love me anymore, and then I have to keep calling. Right, okay. okay. If we had him here, would he see this as a problem, do you think? Yes. Okay, what he would told he me it's a problem. Yeah, I, I, what did he say, in what way? He said, you know I love you. You know I do things where I can't have my phone. You need to stop doing this and you need to stop assuming things that aren't happening. Okay. And how do you deal with that? I tell him I'll try. When he says, you know I love you, do you? No. 
I don't know that. So how do you actually manage not knowing? I don't. I can't manage it. Because if we had that as a problem then, that you just find that incredibly hard to manage that you don't know that, where would you go with that? I mean, I'm not asking you to answer that necessarily, because I mean, I don't know where you go with it, because it's a really, really hard thing to feel. I think I should just break up with him if he doesn't love me. Oh, well, no, hang on, that's just jumping, because at the moment your experience is he doesn't, but he says he does. People are liars. Who what? People are liars. He could but are you lying. just throwing that off? I mean, or is he, why would he lie? Other people have lied to me in the past. Yeah, but what makes you say he's lying? It didn't come across to me to tell us he was lying. Because I don't really know why he would love me. What is there to love? I want him to love me, but I, don't, I can't blame him if he doesn't. So boy, oh boy, we're back to that soul clench. You're not lovable. Why are you looking at me like that? Because, you know, I've never really fully quite grasped where that comes from. What makes your whole sense that you're unlovable? Because I've never felt like someone's loved me. Right, okay. My sisters are better than me. My brother is better than me. I felt like when I was a gymnast, people thought they loved me, but maybe that was just because I was good at something. Now that I'm not good at anything... What is there left? So looking out there, you end up having a sense that all these people have got stuff that you've, like your brothers and sisters and things. You haven't? I have men. Pardon? I have men. I can get men. And that's Just why explain that to me. If Tom can't show me he loves me, then I can have other men. I'm I'm almost there with that with this relationship. Right. I'm okay. almost thinking like it's not gonna work. Okay, so we're at a real danger point then. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you suggest? About about me feeling like this. Should I just break up with him? No, I just think you're 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 doing actually something which I think is really, really important for us. You're identifying at the moment that actually this relationship is at a crucial point. And it's a crucial point at the moment because you're senses you might break up and you can have as many sexual partners you know with other people like you have done before but that's not been around for a bit and at the moment you're saying that this whole relationship is in a real bad state because you of your sense you have i mean he can be a dick you can be a dick we can all be dicks at times it's not because of that it's because actually you have this terrible sense that when he's not there he may not love you and he doesn't respond to your phone call but this is like, to me, we have to work a bit on that. Mm. But what I'd really work, like to, to do is move on just a little bit. Can I move to something else? Which is actually how you had, had worked out that you didn't need to keep sending me all those emails all the time, you know, when I didn't answer. And you'd work that out. How did we work that out? I mean, can I just remind you, you used to send me an email saying, well, if you don't answer this one, you can fuck off, I'm not coming back, and stuff like that. I mean, are we talking about the same sort of stuff here? I just realized that you weren't going to put up with it anymore. You, ha you had ultimatums. What ultimatum did I give? That doesn't sound like That me. it had to stop doing that. Did I say that had to stop? You were wondering why I did. I got embarrassed. You mean I got difficult about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, can I send you emails? Are you suggesting that I can do that? I thought what I got about it, you see, I was just kind of, in, I was intrigued actually now that you had a sense that um, you were embarrassed by it, because actually I thought you were so desperate, that, so that was the problem, it just wasn't answering the desperation. Well, you didn't answer me. Pardon? You wouldn't answer me. I didn't 
You didn't answer my email. Well, I answered some of them, but I, yeah, you're quite right, but I couldn't see Only a couple on of them. A couple. Yeah. But we worked on that for a time. Mm -hmm. I guess I knew that you still cared about our relationship, even if you didn't answer the email. And I don't know that. How did time. you know that then? Because you put up with my bullshit in every session. In the, yeah, yeah, okay. Where's the bullshit in this session so far? In this session? Yeah. You've been pretty good this session. Yeah, I hadn't noticed any bullshit. Yeah. So I haven't missed it then? Nope. No bullshit. No bullshit. You sure? Well, I didn't tell you something. Go on. You know how I said I cut after mm -hmm. I had to go to the ER? Okay. Okay. So it was a bad cut. Mm -hmm. So we're back to that relationship problem. Are you mad at me? I'm much more concerned about the fact that it got so far down to your cutting because it's coming out of this whole sense that you have that you cannot quite get hold of uh, your feeling that this guy's con because he doesn't answer his text, he doesn't love me. Mm -hmm. And that to me is such a huge jump. It is to me too. Mm. So maybe I should, when he doesn't answer, think about what else he could be doing because he's not answering. I don't know. What, 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 do you, what, what? I mean, now you're able to talk a bit more about it with me. I mean, if he's not answering, what's he up to then? Probably cheating on me. He's probably? Cheating on me. Yeah? You got That's what happened last time. When someone wasn't answering me. Oh. That's what I do when well, I'm Well, I misunderstood it. You did that, not them, I thought. Well, it's gone both ways. Right. More bullshit. More bullshit, mm. yeah. Okay. How does it work that if he's not answering, he must be doing that? I, I, I have a problem there. Because if he can't talk to me, he must be hiding something. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, the only time I wouldn't pick up my phone is if I was with another guy. Or in the shower. But I text him or something. Yeah, so we've got something else now. We've got just happened to be in the shower. I mean, I, I, I don't want to keep going around in a circle and keep mm -hmm. challenging you about this, but I can't quite see how you get so certain about it. And it's your certainty that I think is causing some of the trouble. Can you say that again? Your certainty about what it means mm -hmm. is causing such trouble. So how do I break that certainty? Yeah. Well, what do you think about your certainty? Now I've tried to just state it very baldly. I mean, where do you get hold of that? I think that I want to fix it. Pardon? I want to fix it. You mean be uncertain? Well, that'd be a start, wouldn't it? Start to believe him more? That's a good start. Well, well it seems like you have more ideas about what I could do. Do you? I have one idea, if you want it. But I just can't quite get hold of the idea. The, the, the one idea, which that's why I was asking actually about, well, he says, look, you know I love you, but actually you don't. Say that? Well, why not? What's the problem? Because what if he's like, you're right, we should break up. It's like my worst nightmare, me being right. I see. Yeah, that's a bit problematic, isn't it? Like I mean, if you say to him something like, you know, Tom, you know, the thing I find really difficult, I just have this feeling sometimes that you just don't love me. And he's like, you're, you know, I'm sorry, you're right. It doesn't work out. I open up the door to that. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah, I kind of get that. Yeah. So how might you bring it up? really upsets me when he 
don't answer my calls when I don't know what you're doing, if you could just send me a text telling me what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But that's still kind of crazy girlfriend, a little bit, mm, a little bit. Maybe a little bit, a yeah. little less. So I can either be crazy and in a relationship or sad and alone. Perfect life I lead. Well, you've just actually been describing something else, but we're going to stop in a minute. We've only got a couple of minutes left. You always cut my appointment short. Do I? Yeah. I pay for the whole 45 minutes and And I kind of get rid of you. Yeah. What's that about? I'll email you tonight. Well, my hunch would be is you'd think that means that you're unlovable or something, or that, you know, that actually the therapist doesn't want you. I don't really want you here. That'd be my hunch. Mm, yeah, but look at that smile. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> In fact, my reason is that we have come to the end of the session. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's stop. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. So, do you want me to go back to my seat? No, you can stay here. Do you mind? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, anyway. Right. Okay, I'll just go over just a few things I was trying to do, because it, 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 it's, it's, uh, um, it's quite, uh, anyway, you're a nice patient. It's quite difficult when you don't know the person, you can't maneuver around, but but I was trying first to be reasonably empathic about her position, particularly in how she was experiencing something, how she was seeing something, because that's usually where we always try to start in whatever it is. Um, you were actually, I tried to make a more um, relational element, but it's quite, it was quite hard to do it without looking clumsy, I think, only in the sense of trying to maneuver it somewhere into something where we could work on about our own difficulties. So I brought up, I made up the idea that she'd been emailing me, as it were, and stuff like this, because it's likely a patient like this will be. The ones that text all the time and don't get a response and then blow up, and yeah, they do, they contact you a lot, they email quite a lot, they ring the department quite a lot, and various things. So you're trying to sort of link things through and what you've worked on and what you haven't worked on. So I was trying to get hold of some of that. Um, but I think, um, uh, so that would, that would be an attempt for us to get to a much more affective focus within the relational realm related to whatever problem it, it was. Um, we'd also got the um, pattern, really, of where she's misreading or she's reading in a very extreme way problems within the relationship, and then she's engaging, you know, she cuts herself at the end. So I was trying to get back to the relational sort of elements that seem to lead to the behaviors and um, maneuver around that basically, um, uh, to get to it, um, if we could. Um, I think I got her mentalizing some of the time. She got, she got a bit more doubtful at certain points, but she's also pretty quick at flicking back to um, getting back to, well, he doesn't love me, and I know he doesn't, which is the certainty element that you're always trying to inject some uncertainty into the system as best you can. Yeah. I also did, I mean, you, I think you asked me one or two questions. Uh, in, in MBT, if the uh, uh, patient asks you a particular question and you have an answer, it's much better to answer them than to try to, usually because them asking you a question about something indicates a non-mentalizing process. So if you don't answer the question but put it back to them in some way, which I did once or twice, I have to make a judgment about whether or not they're mentalizing. If they are mentalizing, you can put it back and say, well, what is the solution? Or, you know, what do you think we could do? You know, what is there around that's a possibility? They might be able to engage in that if they're able to think clearly. But if they're not able to, you can't just put it back because they can't do anything with it. Because you're actually asking them to engage in a more complex mental work just at the time when they're not able to do it. So the MBT therapist keeps it. So I did give her some answers sometimes, or I said what my position was, and so on. And I tried to do that a few times quite explicitly and deliberately. Okay. I also tried to get, when she, I thought um, Katie was moving a little bit to get her to try and consider the mental states of others and, and gauge that. You can't easily do that when they're so certain about someone else's mental state. They just make them up. But you can do it when they've got some flexibility in the system. So I asked her a little bit about what she felt Tom was up to here. But only at the points when I thought she could consider it just from his position rather than from her own. Because if they can only consider it from their own position, they'll just repeat what they've already said. Well, he, I know it's because he doesn't love me. But in fact, I chose wrongly on one occasion, but on a couple of occasions, you did manage to say something a little bit about his mental state. All right, are there any questions about that slightly discursive interview business? 
Valerie, do you want to shout? I did eventually, but Valerie's asking if you didn't hear that. When, when she brought the boyfriend in, I didn't ask anything further at that point about what he does, where is he, what she, th she thinks he's doing, and so on. Um, the reason I didn't at that point was because I, th when I think when she's stating all that, she was really not mentalizing very well. She was just pretty clear about her position. He's having an affair, I know that, and this is awful and he doesn't love me. So to ask her all that at that point is usually not done in MBT at that particular point. You wait so you've moved her off a bit, which I did, and then got at the idea. And she was a bit doubtful about her then later. So you, you just wait your time slightly. Don't ask her when she's so fit. surprised that you didn't take what seemed like an opportunity to focus on her mental state in which she was practically aware of her own ambivalence. On the one hand, pathologically certain, on the other hand, thinking it made her look crazy. And, and was that something you were specifically avoiding? No, I didn't specifically avoid it. I mean, I thought that I did try to take it a little bit about whether she could be a slightly crazy girlfriend but not a completely crazy girlfriend and when she felt actually she could be doing something else. I just thought she was beginning to move around in more mentalizing mode at that point. So I don't really have to do that much with it in MBT. It, it wouldn't be what we would necessarily say. I think, did you just say ambivalence or something? I yeah. did say that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, but we wouldn't necessarily see that as ambivalence, if you sort of mean conceptually. But so we'd see it much more just clinically. Let's take it clinically, it's easier. Just as her beginning to switch a little bit and get some flexibility in the system. So her fixed certainty becomes a bit of uncertainty. Well, maybe it's this. And that's a just a good sign and you leave it rather than push it too much, which tends to make them swing back. So, I, but you, you're fine to take that up. Yeah, she was. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, poor Katie's got to pretend on the stage. She is in, technically, she's in pretend mode. She was in pretend mode most of that interview, okay? Uh, just from an MBT perspective. And if you, when, yeah, yeah, when you're in pretend mode, but I was trying to pretend she wasn't in pretend mode all the time, <laughs> so that was a problem. But. But, but if, you, if those of you who don't know what pretend mode, yeah, the, the affect isn't there. It tends to be dissociated from the cognitive state and are able to talk about things, but you don't get it gelled with the affect. And I was trying to push in for some affect. Now, in, in MBT, you, you, the first thing that we do in the adherence is, do you recognize this as pretend mode? Right, pretend mode is incredibly common. It's, I'm afraid, quite common when you do skills and stuff like that, you can generate it. You don't have to, it's not an inevitable thing, but, but it's incredibly common. And it's incredibly common that the clinician doesn't quite recognize it. Um, uh, because, it, but when you know the person, I mean, I'm afraid, you know, Katie's, uh, you know, I don't know her, but it, it, I thought she might have moved about it occasionally when she had a bit more affect about her position in relation to the boyfriend. And then I did try to focus a bit on that, but it didn't last very long. Um, and, and that's what you try to do. If that doesn't work, in pretend mode, you will have to engage in challenge. And challenge has to be really quite explicit. It, it links over to the irreverence or confrontation in the other thing. Um, uh, uh, but I couldn't find a place to really push it. Yeah, sorry, just to finish up. No, it didn't, but that would have been fine. I tried to do some steps where I brought it into the relationship. And, and uh, the, the, my attempt to say, look, it, we seem to be doing this, was actually called an affect focus in MBT. 
and, and it's the usual way you try to define what's going on between you. You don't apportion it to them. That we, it's ours, it's you, it's me, it's partly you, it's partly me sort of sense. All right, and then you challenge. So I was going to do it, but then I thought, oh, I better not, because I didn't know how you'd react. But when she said, uh, that's all bullshit, you know, somebody just do it, I nearly said, I, I, I rephrased it, and I said, well, has any of this been bullshit? But had I been in a, uh, a clinical session, I might have said, and you know, that's what worries me, this is just bullshit that we're just doing now. Yeah, and, and the ten motive is bullshit, so I was going to do it. Sorry, Katie. Yeah, no, that would be fine. I didn't, I must say, I didn't feel that she was going so much topic to topic. I was trying to keep it to relationship because that seemed to be the important. Uh, yeah, she was a shape in it, yeah. Yeah, she was, yeah. She was someone who was desperate, yeah. Are you all right? Just trying to jump in. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and then you. Yes, it avoids a huge array of affect, the 10 mode, uh, partly because it's a dissociative sort of state in many ways, uh, you know, sort of component of dissociative dis uh, sort of movement. So, so it would avoid a lot of that, that embarrassment, that sort of shame in front of, you know, and, uh, and so on. So it would certainly do that. I don't think it's specific. I didn't mean my, my comment about in skills and so on. It, it's, um, it's easier to generate in all sorts of ways, and one of the ways is when somebody has to learn something, if you see what I mean. So that, so that um, but, but it, I, I don't think, it's not particular to that at all. I mean, it's incredibly common in MBT, I can assure you. <laughs> it's not, yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel we'd ever developed any, enough of that to find out whether he was a dickhead or not. I mean, uh, to be honest, he didn't sound like a dickhead to me. I mean, anyone, you know, do you know what I mean? I just, it was just very unclear. She didn't seem to be differentiating. And, and I think, you know, you, 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 you've got a great point. But in MBT, we would have to come back, and I would have to come back. Let's say we'd done this now for however long I did. I think I'd probably have to come back and go back and say, okay, let's just stick to whether he's a dickhead and I'd focus it down, that you're having a big problem here because she may not be differentiating when he is, when he's not. That's why I was trying to put in normalizing stuff, like, well, we can all be dickheads, can't we? And she says she is sometimes. Yeah. So you've got to get some sense of, of um, distinction, and she wasn't making that. She was making global statements which are non-mentalized positions. So I don't know whether he is or is not. There's 16 texts for this MBT. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, it, and it's ineffective behavior in these guys' terms, you know, it's completely useless because it's not managing any of her emotions at all. It's just yeah, blurred them. Sorry, uh, you're sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to get at. Yeah, I'm just trying to get at what is this cognitive affective component, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I was trying to get at the fact that she had got hold of it with me at some point, and we'd done something with that, and therefore that's a generalizable sense of the, and contrasts her experience of that and so on. And that would be getting her mentalizing, if you see what I mean, about then that's the component that we're interested in, I think, and where the focus is. So it's not too big. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, can you speak up? I did, but she, well, we would, if, um, the, the, actually the question, how come I heard it? I'm ancient, and you, <laughs> you're young. <laughs> yeah, the, the, he's, he asked about the patient feedback system that we've sort of incorporated over the last year and a half or so, and it's much slicker into the actual treatment. And did I ask about it? I did ask about it at the beginning. I can't remember what you said now. Do you remember what you said? You, uh, yeah, but she said, um, no, she was, it was fine, but she uh, oh, she said, oh, well, okay. I, I, she put on the, f uh, there's, a, there's a service use component in the feedback. So uh, did you visit your GP? Did you go to the ER? You know, what do you call it? Yeah, emergency. Did you go to, you know, yes, no, and things like that. So it keeps a monitor all the time. Um, uh, but, but you take that into the treatment. It's mostly, to be honest, about quality of life and their current symptoms and, and, and how come it's not working and where are we going wrong. So it's immediately brought into the relational realm. But she said, oh, well, okay, I cover myself. So she would have put that on. But often I don't look at it because I forget. So, but so I insist they tell me. <laughs> No, no, my t time was not up about that. Yeah, if, if yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're asking a great question in a way. How much do you take the behavior, which is the self-harm, and, and then ask about suicidal ideation or whatever? I am making the assumption that four to six months into treatment, I'm a pretty good judge with her about that. Now, we would ask about it. Okay. I mean, I didn't in this because I actually wanted to try and do some other things. But you would have to make sure in an MBT session that if somebody's cut themselves, where they are on their sort of risk system. And we have a particular way of trying to go about that. But I, I didn't really, to be honest, want to spend my time doing it because I don't think, to be honest, it's that um, uh, different from how most people do stuff. Do you know what I mean, uh, to be honest? I don't really think that's the case. But, but you would ask about it. So we're not avoiding it, is what you see what I mean, at all. I, I actually don't think, uh, my whole sense was my patient's not at risk for this year at the moment of any kind. I may be to totally wrong. <laughs> I'm very, very wrong, if I think wrong. <laughs> Fought to rule it out. Yeah, you'd have to take them on at the same time, but the major issue with her was really deciding it's pretend mode and then hammering away at that. Uh, you'd have to, I wouldn't bother too much about the teleological sort of aspects that were going on with that unless you'd managed to sort of uh, um, uh, break through the pretend mode. Uh, so uh, that would be your priority, to be honest. You'd have to do that. So definitely go for that. And the two ways to do that, one is by the affect focus, trying to generate actually, look, this is just circular, that, that we're not going, there's nothing here, it's a bit empty, that sort of sense, but doing that in a way that's acceptable to them, obviously, and so on, and doing it fairly gently, that's the first way, it, which I tried. If that doesn't really work, then it's challenged, and then that's a little firmer, and there's various ways that you can challenge, of course, one is quite pleasant, and the other gets more and more, um, in a way, more, more arousing anyway. Yes. Okay. 
yeah, in session number one in MBT, you would, they would have had an evaluation already. I think that was the case this morning, wasn't it? And then you're now the therapist, okay? And in session number one, two, three, probably, you're, you have particular tasks, and your particular tasks are actually engaging them in a mentalizing formulation, which you do. So you look at areas where non-mentalizing occurs. So for her, you go through her relationships, so you'd take two or three relationships that she had. That seems to be a major problem about what happens and what goes wrong. In that, you would also relate that to some degree to uh, the relationship in therapy, very openly and explicitly. Say, well, actually, you know, we need to watch out for that then. So, for example, her relationships are slightly more dependent, as I understand it, Katie, and, and she kind of likes men, and she'll do everything to please them. So let's say that came out. I would say, well, you and I are then going to definitely watch out for that. So any time I think, well, you just kind of please me, I'm going to bring it up. And any time you have a sense that you are, will you please bring it up, because this is obviously going to create some trouble. And, and you identify that. You would identify the self-harm as being an outcome. The thing for ours is that's the end of the motorway. We're interested in the slip road onto the motorway, if you see what I mean. So that's why I, I was sticking with the relationship to some extent, because I think that's where the problem is. She deals with that. She's not going to self-harm. So, um, so I would stick around there. So you'd identify that. And so you'd go over that, and you'd work out, is there a lot of hypermentalizing? Is that how she manages stuff? That's probably the pretend mode, and you'd have to really worry about that with this patient, and you'd identify that and so on. And then you write that formulation down, which is just your kind of sense of what is going to work on, and then you give it to them, and then you rework it jointly, and then you dump it. You don't really dump it, but you know what I mean? What happens, of course, is that people do this, and then they lose sight of it at the four-month point. You know, they forget about it because they do lots of other work, so you can revisit it. Okay, so it would be a mentalizing sort of formulation. Okay. And don't forget our patients come into MBT now having done 12 sessions of, of um, introductory group MBT work, which is about mentalizing, about personality disorder, about emotions, about attachment processes, and so on. Is that all right? Or have I lost you for thought? Okay. Oh, we well should say, I, I, sorry, am I allowed just one minute? J Katie, you're allowed to say what it felt like. I think nobody, we should ask you, having, you know, what, what these things feel like. Uh, do, do you have, that with you? yeah. Were you in pretend mode all the time? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I was trying to get with what he wanted me to say, but I didn't know what he wanted to say, so I guess that left me pretend mode, pretending I knew what he wanted me to do. <laughs> But that's interesting because I didn't want you to do anything. Yeah. You know, so uh, you know, the idea that you have to do something for the therapist is, uh, yeah. But I, I was understand. definitely trying to mentalize him into putting it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks very much, Katie. Thanks. Okay.